This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Back here as we go to the fourth inning. Scoreless ball game. BYU will come to the plate. And the first pitch fouled off. Strike one to uh, Jackson Clough. Jackson struck out his first time up. Clough, Kringlin, and McIntyre do up against uh, Matt Volker, who's led the Cougars, held the Cougars to no runs on two base hits. And here is Volker's pitch. That's uh, down low. And both those uh, base hits were hammered. Brock Hale hammered his ball to left. Zapiti hammered his double off the wall. Just nothing to show for him. Now Cougar's about a foot away from the 2-0 lead. It's the yeah. Pades. Off that blue monster out there, hit about 36 feet up. But need another foot to get it out. As uh, Clough uh, went to bunt, and then I guess he pulled the bat back as they appeal it, say he did not go for it. Yeah, tried to a push bunt. Second baseman playing really deep. The left-handed pitcher saw the breaking ball down and pulled it back just in time. Two balls and a strike to Clough. 321 average. There's a ball hit up the middle. Base hit for Clough. Third hit for the Cougars, and that will bring uh, Kringlin to the plate. Keaton flew out to right field his first time up. Keaton 0 for 4 in the first game. Well, check that. He did have a hit in that first game. Yeah, he had our only RBI. That's right. So one hit so far for Keith in the series. As he will step in there. That was a 5-1 loss. Cougars came back last night with an 8-5 victory. And a quick throw to first base is uh, a little late. And it was the... Both those games were the tell of errors. We had the Strange. big errors that cost us the game, and they had the big errors yesterday. So, Something you normally don't see in Division One baseball where two teams play so poor defensively. Kringland uh, tried to push that one down the first base slide and just missed it. 0-1. Coach Mike Littlewood going through a series of signs with Kringland and with uh, Clough at first base. Cougars thinking about maybe playing a little bit of small ball here, trying to get the lead. Game scoreless through three. And here is Volker's pitch, and Kringlin hammers one down the right field line. That is a fair ball. That is in the corner. Here comes Mac uh, Clough. He'll score from first base. Kringlin is going for three, and Keaton Kringlin with a triple. That's awesome. Good for him. Took the break, the changeup running away. And just hit it, sliced it down the right field line, and it just kept slicing away from Estera and got all the way in that corner. And Clough's able to score from first, and the Cougs strike early. I love it. I told you, Kring, loving the left handed pitching out there. He's hit the ball well, gone the opposite way both times he's been up there tonight, and he triples in a run. Cougars lead one to nothing. Now it's good to see him getting going. I love seeing him go the other way with authority. Now McIntyre with a runner at third base and a quick throw down, and that Ooh. ball just about got away. Again, a little bit of an errant throw right there by Cooper Ewell. We've seen he loves to throw behind runners and almost threw that one down in the left field corner. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he had a big pickoff late in the game, but he also had the huge Bases loaded air that cost a couple of runs in that game as well. So he likes to throw, but it can cost you if you're not accurate. Nobody out. As McIntyre steps back in, fouls it at the plate, 0-2. Well, they're going to give you a run here if you're Mitts. Just find a way to hit a ball anywhere but the corners, and you'll get yourself an RBI. Big run out there at third. Yeah, corners or the pitcher. Just get it past the yeah. pitcher up the middle anywhere, and you're going to knock in a run. Cougars have uh, scored one in the inning. Here's the pitch. That's outside corner. Call strike three. Wow, I thought that pitch was outside. One man out. And this is when the Cougars have struggled in this series. They get yeah. guys on base. They get him in scoring position, and they're just 
haven't been consistent in driving those guys in. Now Sapiti, he hit one off the top of the wall his last time up. Well, do the same thing, just hit yourself a sack fly and get yourself a run. It's all we need right here. Here is Volker's pitch to Ryan Sapiti, and it's a high ball one. Yeah, you knew he'd come with breaking ball first pitch after the last fastball he threw Sapiti. And this can be a big confidence boost for the team here to have your young freshman come in in this situation and find a way to get a big RBI. They're giving you an RBI. Just hit a ball to short right here. It sounds so easy. Yes. It? Here's the one ball pitch. You know, we Speedy actually. takes that down low. I was having a debate with Coach Bradshaw, the pitching coach, uh, two nights ago. He said it's so simple, but yet not easy. Right? The concept yeah. of it is so simple. Well, it's real it, simple when you don't want to do it. Yeah, it is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so maddening when you don't want to do it. 2 0. Sapiti hammers one. Right fielder coming in. He's not going to get there. Kringlin's going to try to score. Here comes the throw, and he will score. So Sapiti, an RBI single. Two hits in the ball game for Ryan Sapiti. And the Cougars lead it two to nothing. Yeah, and I thought that was gonna, that's such a tough read for Kringlin because you don't know if he's going to catch it, so you have to tag. You can't be off the bag. And uh, short hops him, and he's able to beat the throw out. And Sapiti, fantastic job. First two at-bats, two hits, and an RBI. Got to love the freshman getting his name called again and answering it. Well, Ryan now one for six in, or I mean three for six in the series. And the first pitch to Jelich, he tries to push one, and there's a throw that gets down the line, and uh, Sapiti not able to advance second baseman went out. But again, Cooper Ewell will throw a little bit low. First baseman Chavez had a hard time coming up with it. Well, Sapiti got a little too far off the base there. On a push point, you're supposed to see the ball down first before you get a hard secondary. Jelic granted that his first time up. Cougars with a pair of singles and a triple in the inning against uh, Matt Volker. And that one ball's hammered left field base hit. Sapiti around second base. He'll hold right there. So Jelilich with a single. What a funny game, this thing, this game of baseball that we love, Brent. You have the easy situation of, hey, just put a ball and play up the middle and you'll score a run. His last at bat, and he couldn't get it done. And then this at bat, run around first, a l- little bit more pressure to get it done, and he's able to hit a hard line drive to left. It's just... This game's so frustrating. It's so frustrating at times. Now the pitching coach out for LMU as the uh, he'll draw the infield in with Cougars at uh, first and second base. One man out. Cougars have put two on the board, and Carson Matthews is going to be the hitter for BYU. And, boy, it's just nice to see the Cougars hit some balls hard. Yeah, absolutely. Have them drop. They've just struggled in this entire series with that, especially with guys in scoring position. We are here at LMU. Good uh, crowd on a beautiful day for baseball. Uh, LMU won game one. Cougars won last night. And uh, Cougars on top here early, 2-0. Two runs on six base hits. And Carson Matthews will step in. Carson grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Well, corners are playing in. Middle's playing double play depth. Corners are playing in and try to take away from the drag bunt. Matthews, the right-handed hitting second baseman, takes the pitch, is down low ball one. and Well, they bring Sapiti in. He's doing the job, and Matthews has done a nice job defensively as well as swinging the bat at second base, yeah. moving Sue to third. So this might be the lineup right now it might be. that you're going to go with. Jacobson, I saw him out working on that shoulder. And I think he's out for at least this week and possibly some games next weekend. Ball's hammered by Matthews. Deep left field, and Carson Matthews has hit it out. A three-run shot by Matthews. He almost overran Jelilich. Wow, that was close. And Danny's got to get moving. He keeps turning around, smiling at Matthews. Carson, so excited, almost passed him. In fact, it came so close that the second-base umpire gave the safe sign. The safe sign. Wow. Good for Carson Matthews, though. Matthews uh, jumps on one down in the zone and hits it out, and the Cougars have put five on the board here in the inning. Good for Carson Matthews. Again, you get your name called. It's been a while since you've been in the lineup, and you come through in the clutch. You love it. 
Five nothing, top of the order. Brian Sue comes up, and Sue bunts the ball down the third baseline. Sheer up with it. He'll throw to first Ooh. in time, Ooh. beating Sue by about a half a step. Great play by Sheer as we've seen him the entire series out there at third base, two men out. Sue now 0 for 3 today, and that will bring Noah Hill up. Well, Matthews launched that one, got it up high enough to get it over that wall. I think it landed in the uh, the netting out there over the wall. And the Cougars with a five spot here in the top of the fourth. Hill steps in and Noah hammers one left field. Left fielder Oyama came in. Now he's got to go back, went back and made the catch. Wow. What a play by Oyama out there. Cougars got five runs. They got those five runs on five base hits. There were no errors. And nobody left. We're through three and a half. Five nothing. BYU leading LMU on your new skin BYU radio network. This is BYU baseball on the new skin BYU sports network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Cougars up five to nothing now after the three run shot by Carson Matthews, his second of his. Collegiate career now has uh, 15 RBIs. And Justin Sterner on the hill. First pitch inside. Ball one to uh, Nick Sogar. Top of the order for LMU here in the bottom of the fourth inning. LMU looking, still looking for their first base hit. Here's the one ball pitch. That ball line foul down the first base side. So Matthews just got under one, launched it right yeah, down the line, well, got it out of here by a bunch. And that's the one where you just have to get it high enough to get out of here. Had enough distance, but it's all about the height. Well, the fourth inning has been a really good offensive inning for the Cougs. I think that's the inning we scored the most runs in this year. Pitch is up high, ball two. Well, important right now to, after you score some runs, just c- come out and... Uh, Get a shutdown inning for Sterner. Two balls and a strike to Sogard. Pitch is fouled out of play. Two and two the count. Sogard wearing number seven. He is a junior out of Sacramento. Good shortstop for LMU. He's kind of the engine that gets this thing going, that leadoff spot that runs very well. Pitch is down low, ball three. Well, again, you just put up a five spot. Got to go attack him right here. No freebies. Don't want to walk the leadoff hitter right after. Feels like we've said that so much this weekend. (laughs) Cerner again, 3-2. Ball popped up foul. Off the third base side. Softball field here over the Cougar dugout down the uh, third base side. No games being played over there this weekend. We've had years where the, both the Cougar softball and baseball teams have been here at LMU. 3-2 pitch outside, so he walks Sogard. The lead off the fourth inning. He, uh, Second walk of the game by Sterner. Those have been the only base runners given up. Oyama steps in. Hit the ball hard. Good play by Kringlin. Robbed him of a base hit his first time up. As Kenny Oyama. The left-handed hitter steps in. Pitch is over for a call, strike one. Good pitch right there. (laughs) You know, when you have a five-run lead, it makes the LMU offense have to think a little differently. This would normally be a small ball situation, but I doubt they're going to sack bunt here because you're chasing more than just one. Curveball a little bit low, and you don't even know if they're going to run him here. Yeah, exactly. Kind of running yourself out of an inning. So a ball and a strike to Oyama. Cougar third baseman Brian Subat even with the bag. 
to Renfield, double play dip up the middle, and Kringlin holding the runner on. Big lead by Sogard and a throw to first, and Sogard back in safely. Jason Gill, 11th year as a head coach here at LMU. Played uh, from out of Cal State Fullerton. Playing here at Page Stadium. Uh, seats about 600. And here is the pitch, 1-1. One, one. That's outside for ball two. Coach Gill is one of my favorite coaches in this league. Such a good guy. Comes over during BP, has a conversation. You can tell he loves baseball and just loves these kids. Positive guy. Doing a really good job here at LMU. Two balls and a strike. There goes the runner. Pitches up high. Throw down. And Sogard's going to get his 24th steal. More importantly, though, three and one now the count. As Sterner struggling here early in the fourth inning. Finding the strike zone. And Cougars are going to... Th- Get some uh, work going on in the bullpen. Yeah, last thing you want from your starter is to have a big inning and then him come out and struggle. Pound the zone and make them earn it. Here's a 3-1. High and tight, ball four. So back-to-back walks with the middle of the order coming up. Yeah, just, it just gets them back in the game. Gives them an opportunity with a big hit. Puts them right back in this game. Got to put your foot down on them when you have them. And having this type of inning to start can give the momentum back to them. So this is a really big at-bat right here. Michael Bradshaw, Cougar pitching coach out. And uh, going to have a little chat with the sophomore right-hander. As the Cougar scored five in the top half of the inning. He's walked the leadoff guy, the number two hitter, on. And uh, Shear, who had a home run yesterday, will come up as Bradshaw. You never know what they're saying. Could be something about his uh, delivery or something he's picked up or just trying to settle settle him down mentally a little bit. Yeah, just get him settled in. Back-to-back walks to start this inning. Just slow them down, get back to what's been working so good the first three innings. And I will say this, the one thing that's that's nice about Shearer is he's a guy that he'll hit into a double play. He can also leave the yard, but he's a situation here where the double play is still in order. Get yourself a ground ball, get your double play, and try to really minimize this inning. Sterner struck Shear out his first time up. The left-handed hitter will step in. He is a junior out of Agora Hills. 23 RBIs on the year. The home run came yesterday, his only one of the year. As Sterner looks in, has got the sign, and here is the perch first pitch to Shearer, and that's a, a down low ball one. Yeah, Bo Burrup and Blake Inouye down there getting their bodies going in the bullpen. Nobody out. One and all the count. Runners at first and second base. And there's a pitch ball hit pretty well. Deep right field. Back goes uh, Brock Hill. He goes up and that's out of here. Just like that. Five to nothing. Goes to five to three is Shearer. Hits the three-run shot. He knew it was gone. He just kind of flipped his bat and went into the home run trot quickly. Yeah, I mean, hadn't even given up a hit in the game. That's the first hit he gives up. And now they're back in the game all because of the back-to-back walks to start this inning. And now here they are having life again. Again, that's all Shear knew. I mean, he knew that uh, the home run or the, he had to throw a strike. Shear knew it was coming. Yep. Now the uh, home plate umpire trying to tell Jason Gill to keep his uh, team back off the field after the three-run home run celebration. A big hit. What you want your guys to do in the three-hole. 
ends up doing it. And we got ourselves a ball game. A lot of baseball left. Up steps uh, Trevin Escara. He grounded out his first time up. And here's the pitch, way inside, all the way back to the screen for ball one. Wow, it's like Sterner's completely lost it. He got that five-run lead, and it was like the pressure came off yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't know. He looked so fantastic the first three innings, and all of a sudden, bam. Now... Noah Hill's going to go out and try to settle him down a little bit. That'll count as a visit. As the scare will step back in, the scare is still looking for his first hit of the series. He's 0 for 10. This kid's uh, one of the home run leaders in the league with 14, and that pitch. Uh, Curveball down low, ball two. He's now done. Mike Littlewood, that is it. That's going to be it for Justin Sterner. We'll take a 90 second break. Be back with more Cougar baseball action right after this on your new skin BYU radio network. This is BYU baseball on the new skin BYU sports network. Now, Blake Inouye into the ball game for the Cougars. Blake on the year, uh, 4.67 earned run average. No one's a lot, no wins and one loss. Has a couple of saves to his credit. This will be his 21st appearance to lead the Cougars. In 27 innings, he's given up 30 hits. In a way, we had him on air last night. Post game, great young man, and called on here to throw some strikes and get some outs. Really a stunning development for Sterner. I've never seen a kid lose it quite that quickly. Popped up. Ball foul out of play. Yeah, so weird to see the, how that just transpired. Just You could tell he just completely didn't have the confidence. Well, that or he lost focus yeah. after getting up 5 nothing. Which usually is not like him. Usually it's like, okay, I get a big lead. I'm just going to go cruise now. And two big walks and the, and the three-run shot, and here we go. Mascara steps back in. Here's the 2-1. All fouled out of play. Mascara, a junior out of San Diego. Will step in. And the pitch. That's down low. Ball three. In a way, in 27 innings, 10 walks, 30 strikeouts. Yeah, this game might turn into a kind of a bullpen session. It bullpen could, didn't yeah. look good in the top half of the inning, and Sterner already out here in the bottom. Boy, good great pitch. change right there. Good and pitch. Scara swings and misses one man out. That's a big strikeout right there to kind of slow down that momentum. Dugout over there is all excited, jumping up and down. You got kids hitting three-run home runs and bat flipping, and it's a big strikeout to, to slow that down. And you got two more big outs right here to get your team back up to try to extend this lead. Steven Chavez steps in. He struck out his first time up. Here is the first pitch from Inouye, and that ball's fouled off. Uh, Coach Littlewood said pregame that he – if he gets Sterner six, seven, eight innings, he'd probably back him up with uh, Drew Zimmerman, but uh, that plan changed after Sterner could only give you three, give you three really good solid innings, and then uh, things fell apart. Here's the 0-1 ball fouled out of play. Well, this is where you're hoping now that uh, obviously this is out for out here, but hoping anyway can give you a couple of long middle relief type innings and then you can go to Zimmerman you know in the sixth or seventh if needed no balls two strikes two men out or one man out nobody on base as Chavez steps back in and here is Blake Inouye from the stretch 
And the pitch. Strike three called on the outside corner. Chavez goes down on strikes. So Blake comes in, strikes out the first two guys he faces. Yeah, really good job by Blake. Boy, what a bright young man. Had him on last night. You know, a lot of times when you're interviewing a kid, they're a little scared, a little whatever. I'm telling you, he just took over the interview. It was oh, yeah. great. He was probably begging for it. He probably want to take over. <laughs> He's been telling me all year, hey, I'm going to take your job one day. He's a smart kid. Love him. Smart kid for wanting your job? Yeah, well, no kidding. <laughs> He's talking about it on the radio because he just loves to oh. talk. Pitch is hit up the middle. Jackson Clough's got it on a couple of hops. Throw to first for the out. And LMU retired here. Not before they got three runs on one hit. No errors, nobody left. We're through four complete. 5-3, Cougars lead the Lions on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Raquel leads it off. First pitch fouled over into the bullpen area of uh, LMU. Brock, a single in the first, struck out in the third against uh, Matt Volker. Volker, the starter, has given up five runs on seven hits through four innings. A big blast, the three-run shot by Carson Matthews, the Cougars' second baseman. And here's the 0-1. Fly ball, shallow right, right fielder coming on, and he is going to get there for the out. The scare had to come a long way but made the play. One man out, Jackson Clough will step in now. Jackson has uh, struck out and singled and scored a run. Clough uh, hitting uh, cleanup in the order today for the Cougars. And here's the first pitch, swing and a miss. Good changeup right there. Jackson way ahead of that pitch. Well, this game 0-0 after three, and then eight runs scored in the fourth. Five by BYU, three by LMU. Pitch is a little bit low for a ball. LMU has one conference opponent remaining. That will be home against Gonzaga on the last uh, weekend of the conference games, regular season games. 1-1 pitch down low. Cougars have two series left. They'll play at San Francisco at home next weekend and then travel to Santa Clara to end the year. After today's ball game, Cougars will have eight games left. That ball is grounded foul down the first base side. And the count now two and two on Clough. Kringlin's on deck. Kringlin tripled in a run in the fourth inning. Hit the ball down the right field line. And Keaton gets that left-hander. Swung the bat well here today. Pitch is inside ball three. Well, you called it, right? You said he's just waiting to see a left-hander. Pay dividends in that fourth inning. <laughs> Three and two the count. And here's the pitch to Clough. Down low, ball four. So Clough with a one out base on balls. And that will bring Kringlin back up. Kringlin, first time up, flew to right and triple in the right field corner, drove in a run, eventually came around to score. On the hit by the Cougars as Keaton will step in. Cougars trying to come up with some kind of an answer for that three-run inning by uh, LMU. And here is Volker's pitch, and Kringlin takes that one down low, ball one. Well, that's what you want to do, right? Put up a five spot. They answer with a three spot. And now you got to go back out and answer them. It's just a back-and-forth type game. LMU with right now one guy in the pen be- beginning to throw. And here's the 1-0 pitch. That's way outside ball two. Looks like another left-hander is throwing. 
for the Lions. You might see a little hit and run action right here. 2-0. and Volker throws a lot of strikes. Two balls, no strikes. One man out, one man on. As we are in the top of the fifth here. Throw to first and uh, back in safely is uh, Clough. Uh, Clough, team leader in steals with nine on the year. Has not been thrown out. Cougars 38 out of 46 this year in steals. So when they run, they're usually pretty successful. 2-0 pits. That's over for a strike. So the Cougars, uh, when you look at this series, really didn't get good starts by any of their guys. Yeah, the rotation wasn't great this weekend. They had to go into the pen early against this Lion team. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Well, Keaton Kringlin hits his first home run of the year. As he's getting job done here today for BYU. They've scored seven runs now on eight base hits. Still only one man down and uh, Mitch McIntyre. Alex, Alex Burge is the new pitcher. He's a freshman out of Stevenson Ranch, uh, California. As he will come in and throw for the Lions. He's another left-hander. And he will face uh, McIntyre. And McIntyre tries to push bunt the ball, but fouls it down the first base side. Burge, uh, three wins, a loss, 3.91 earned run average. In 23 innings pitch, has given up uh, 24 hits, 10 runs, has 12 strikeouts. So Burge, the freshman, on in relief here in the top of the fifth. Pitch is on the outside. Corn Cougars answer with a two-run home run after giving up three in the bottom of the fourth. So nice job by Kringlin. Yeah, great answer. Great answer. Here is the 0-2, McIntyre's. Swings and misses for the second out, second strikeout of McIntyre in the game. And Sapita steps in now. Uh, Ryan is two for two. He doubled off the wall and then had an RBI single in the fourth. So Sapiti steps in, takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Ryan Sapiti, Bishop Gorman High School product out of Las Vegas. Freshman getting second and third starts of the year here in this series. There's a little one hopper. Short star, the first baseman Shear comes in and makes the play in front of the shortstop. So Sapiti grounds out 5 3 for out number three. Cougars with two runs in the inning. They got those two runs on just one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We are through four and a half, seven three Cougars leading. The Lions on your new skin BYU radio network. Alex Lambeau will lead it off for LMU as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Lambeau struck out his first time up in the third inning. Blake Inouye on the hill for the Cougars. A swing and a miss. Curve ball. 0-2. Bottom third of the order, Lambeau, Hirsch, and Cooper Ewell do up. As BYU up 7-3 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They scored uh, five in the fourth, two more in the fifth. Strike three called on the outside corner, and uh, Lambeau goes out for the second time. Boy, ball really carrying here in the ballpark today. We uh, play a day game here and there's already been uh, three home runs hit, two by the Cougars, one by the Lions. Especially that ball of uh, Kringling. I mean, the ball was hit well, but I'm telling you, last night Oyama would have caught that ball 20 feet in front of the fence. He would have, and that's we've talked about that the last two nights, that Saturday is here at the, in the yard and the day game is a different type of the way the ball travels. Especially sunny day, very little wind blowing. As Hurst steps in, he walked his first time up. 
First right-handed hitter. First pitch from Inouye is up a little bit high. Ball one. Well, when your starters don't get it done for you, I mean, the, the, the bullpen is called on, and Cougars have not really had to stretch the pen this year with, with the good starting pitching they've had. And uh, so we'll see how this goes. Inouye's looked awfully good since coming in. Yeah, I mean, it's true, though. I mean, you look at there's weekends where we've only used six or seven total arms, and so we really haven't had to stretch it a ton. But uh, but the bullpen has been also so good when called upon this year. Here's the one one pitch. Fastball outside corner calls strike two. In a way, out of uh, Henderson, Nevada, suburb of uh, Las Vegas, he is a senior pitching his last year for the Cougars. He's just been rock solid for the Cougars his entire career. And here is the 1-2. Strike three called inside corner fastball. You know, and in a way, just talked about last night, his BYU experience and how much he loved playing where his dad played. And... Uh, you know, no, it's been everything to him that he thought he, he, he thought it, it's been everything he thought yeah. it would be. You know, the cool thing about that is he uh, he went to CSN. He was a closer for them for two years in Southern Nevada Junior College. Got to go to the cultural series one time and play with them in the Junior College cultural series. He wanted to be a Cougar in the worst way. It was unbelievable. Swing and a miss he by kept Cooper Yule. Calling Coach Herring almost weekly, like, hey. You got a spot for me? Hey, I want to be there. I want to be there. I can pitch for you guys. I can help you. He had a scholarship offer to two teams in our league and chose to come to BYU because he just wanted to be there. So it's a really cool story, and it's pretty awesome. No balls in a strike. Two men out. And the Lion catcher steps back in. Here's the 0-1. Strike two called. And right now, Blake Inouye, he is a strike thrower. As he is coming in and uh, throwing strikes with every pitch. Here's the 0 2. Curve ball, outside ball one. How about that? You're seeing him in his third appearance this weekend. I think his first two appearances, I think he threw yeah. a total of 10 pitches. <laughs> he had the biggest out of the night last night, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. He came in Thursday and got a couple of ground balls, but both uh, plays were errors on the Cougars. Then he came back last night and uh, threw great. Anyway, last night went a third of an inning. Just three pitches. And I think he only threw three or four the night before, so he's fresh. He's throwing more warm-up pitches yeah. than he has actual game pitches. And I'm not talking about in the bullpen. I'm talking about the seven pitches they give you on the mound. He's throwing 14 of those. And now, what, 21 of those now in three days. Here's the one-two. Popped up, easy play. Clough at shortstop, calling everybody off. He's there and will make the catch for the out. And the Lions re- retired in order here. In the fifth, Cougars lead 7-3 to three after five innings on your new skin, BYU Radio Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, we go to the sixth inning. Danny Jelilich will lead it off. Danny, one for two today. And now he is two for three today as he singles up the middle. So Jell is seeing it, seeing the ball so much better, so much more confident to play. Boy, early in the year it was, it was uh, just a, almost a strikeout waiting to happen. He yeah, so much better. And and the key to him is just it's all about pitch selection. We've talked about it all year. When he swings at strikes, he's really good. Um, when he gets a little over aggressive out of the zone, he can struggle. But so far the last couple of weeks, he's really gotten it going, and it's just in time. Carson Matthews now steps in. He had the three run shot his last time up. Carson's second home run of the year. And there's a bunt back to the pitcher. Pitcher picks it up. He throws the first for the out. So the Cougars pick up a base. 
Yeah, good execution right there. He wants to try to push that for a hit. But uh, in that situation, you also been able to move him up to second with your leadoff hitter coming up in Brian Sue is also a good, good thing to do. Sue steps in. He's 0 for 3 today. He's due, isn't he? Well, I, think I think he's, he's due. He's 1 for 12. I would say yeah. he is about due. He's due. Brian Sue wearing number 13. He is a senior out of San Ramon, California. Jelich with incredible speed at second base, and the pitch to Sue is outside ball one. Cougars uh, seven runs on nine hits. LMU three runs on one hit. There were two walks and the home run. That's been what LMU has been able to put together. Cougars with a couple of home runs in those nine hits. And have scored seven times and threatening again here in the sixth. There's a ball grounded foul down the third baseline. I'll tell you, the more I watch Brandon Shearer, the more impressed I am with this kid. He's so fluid and so calm when he goes after balls. I, he's just uh, got a great uh, great glove, good arm. Yes, he does. He struck a little bit yesterday. He had a tough air on a, on a swinging bunt where he, he underthrew the, on, a, on a run-through play. The first baseman that cost cost his team a run, but other than that, he's been really good this series. One ball, one strike, one out, and Brian Sue takes that pitch outside for ball two. I love the approach the offense has today, Brent. They are taking good fringe pitches and and taking aggressive swings at at strikes. I love it. Two balls and a strike. Much better than the first two nights here. As Burge, the lefty, fires. And Sue fooled on the pitch. Swings on a pitch that's down in the dirt. And the count uh, evens up at two balls, two strikes. You know, you don't see Brian get fooled too often. You don't see that type of swing from him. Maybe he's just baiting him. Like, hey, throw that again and and elevate it. Last couple of nights, he's been moved over to third base. He's played first, second, and now third this year. and Things uh, seem to be working better defensively for the Cougars. There's a ball hit out toward the shortstop. Uh, Sogard's got it, and they'll throw Sue out for out number two. Noah Hill now steps in with an RBI chance. Well, Noah's last two at-bats, he hammered balls to left with nothing to show for it. Oyama had an unbelievable jumping play his last time. Noah Hill 0 for 3. He's grounded out in the first. And the two fly ball outs to Oyama out there and left. As Noah Hill, wearing number, again, the normal jersey number 2 on this road uh, uniform. The other one that just says Cougars across had to be cut off him up in Seattle a couple of weekends ago. In fact, it was two weeks ago today. Yes, it was. Uh, no, yeah, it was Friday it was night. Friday night, yeah, Friday yesterday. Night. That's right, yesterday. Yeah. As he got hit in the throat, the pitch ball as he was catching. and Scary moments there for the Cougars. The entire team. As Jelilich uh, making a little noise out there at third base, and Noah Hill almost got hit by a pitch 2-0. and You know, if he had just kept going there, Bird had no I, yeah. idea. He might have been able to steal that bag. Try to get him to balk, though. That's what he took off there for. Two and over the count. Two men out. Runner at third base. Cougars trying to add to their 7-3 lead. And the pitch to Hill is outside ball three, and Brock Hill is up next. Yeah, you got Brock Hill on deck. No gotta one knows. Believe, yeah, I got to believe yeah. Burge is uh, going to be a strike here. But yeah, he wants to get back. Here. He wants to get right back in the count here because you don't want to face him in this situation. Here's Burge's pitch. Hill takes that one up high, ball four. So. Four consecutive pitches, the walk. 
And that's going to bring um, Brock Hill up. Leads the Cougars in home runs with eight. He is one for three today. Hit a sharp single in the first inning. Struck out in the third. Flew to right in the fifth. So his fourth time up. Brock will step in with uh, Jelilich at third. Hill at first. And now timeout called. Is uh, Cooper Ewell going to make an official visit out to the mound to have a chat with uh, Alex uh, Birds, the freshman? This is a big part of the game right here, Brent. Sixth inning, got a four-run lead. A couple runners on de- on base with Brock up. If he's able to put a ball in the gap here and blow this thing open a little bit. And now I believe we are going to get a pitching change. Yes, we are. We'll take a 90-second break. Right-hander against Hale. We'll be back right after this on your new skin, BYU Radio Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. New pitcher number 99, C.J. Fernandezis. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. I'm glad that you're the one that has to say it, not me. Got no shot of saying that. Two men out, runners at the corners, and Brock Hale is due up. Fernandezis has got a good record this year. He's, uh, he has a 2.91 earned run average in 20 appearances, three wins, a loss, one save, 34 innings pitched, 29 strikeouts. And he will face Hale here with two men out. Well, they came in and got out of a big jam on Thursday. A little fastball slider guy. Hale steps in. Trying to pick up an RBI here. Second on the team with 32 on the year. And there's a off-speed pitch outside ball one. Big spot here for Brock Hale, your offensive leader right here. One ball, no strikes. And here's the pitch to Hale, and that's a, another curveball. That one caught the outside corner, one ball and one strike. Yeah, good pitch right there. Ball and a strike to Hale, the senior out of Mesa, Arizona. And here's the right-hander's pitch. That's down low for ball two. Boy, nothing but breaking pitches to Hale. The first three that he's seen. Brock, uh, four hits in the series. And ten at-bats. And here is the 2-1. And the pitch drops in, another curveball on the outside corner. Just painting that pitch away. Brock's just got to have an approach that it, just slap it through that four hole right here with two strikes. If you see that slider again and get yourself an RBI, he's got the second baseman playing on the other side of the bag towards shortstop. Huge four hole right here. 2 2 pitch. Hell takes that one down low. Came with a fastball, but uh, well inside. And- down in the dirt, and the count goes full three and two. Well, you got Noah's going to be moving here. So Hill will be off of the pitch. Jellich at third base will hold there. And Hill with the 3 2 count on deck is uh, Jackson Clough, left hander. And here's the pitch, and Hale swings and foul tips it Ooh. up and off of uh, Cooper Ewell, and hopefully he's okay. The umpire out to get the ball to the Lion right-hander, and uh, Cooper Ewell got it. Hopefully he's all right on that foul tip. The life of a catcher, Brent. Re- really a good pitch right there down in the zone, and uh, Brock just got a piece of it. So, again, we're set with uh, Hale at the plate. 
Cougars up 7-3 as we play the top of the sixth. And here is the pitch. Brock Hale hits the ball deep in the hole. Third baseman's got it. Throw to first. Not in time as Hale beats the throw. Big high hopper, and Hale really going down the line, picks up an infield single, and the Cougars lead 8-3. Good hustle by Brock Hale down the line. Yeah, it really was. It's all of, His legs did that. All because of his legs, he was able to get that. Great job getting down the line, Brock Hale. Jelilich scored. Noah moved all the way from first base to third base and runners at the corners again. And now Jackson Clough stepping in. Jackson has struck out, singled, and walked. He scored two times. Playing him pretty much straight away in the outfield in the first pitch to Clough. Nice change. He swings and misses for strike one. Jackson uh, hitting 321 as he came into the game tonight. He's got three hits in the series in 11 at bats. And Clough swings again and misses at a change. And the count quickly 0 2 to the Cougar sophomore. Boy, you can see, loves to throw the slider to the right hander and come back with that change to the left hander. Cougars five in the fourth, two in the fifth, one so far here in the sixth. And they're still up there trying to pack on a couple more runs. Cougars now eight runs on ten base hits. And here is the pitch. Before a pitch throw to first base. And hail back in uh, safely. C.J. Fernandez, the right-hander. And here's the 0-2 pitch out. Thought uh, Hale might be moving on that pitch. That's definitely not a time. Either that or some kind of a double steal situation possibly. Yeah, but with Noah Hill at third, you're you're really not going to try that little two out. If someone else was there, you have that chance. But when you got Clough up, you're going to let him hit. This is a spot where Coach wants him to hit every single time. Ball and two strikes to uh, Jackson. As Fernandez is from the stretch, here's the one-two. Ball fouled into the catcher's glove, and Clough goes down on strikes. Cougars with a run. On two hits, there were no errors. Two runners left. We are through five and a half. Eight three Cougars leading the Lions on your new skin, BYU. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Go to the bottom of the sixth, top of the order for LMU. Nick Sogard against uh, Blake Inouye in the first pitch outside, ball one. Sogard. Popped up and walked in the ball game. And here is the 1-0 pitch. Ball hit pretty well. Deep right field. Back goes Brock Hale. He is going to get there and make the catch. Really good route right there for Brock. He really is a good outfielder. He doesn't get enough respect for how good of an outfielder he is. His angles he takes to the ball are so good. Ran that down right in front of the 365-foot mark. One man out, and uh, Kenny Oyama steps in. Oyama to the plate. First pitch outside. He's walked and grounded out in the game. Santa Clara leading Pepperdine four to two. No, Santa Clara leading uh, USD four to nothing in the fifth. And uh, Pepperdine and San Francisco all tied up a two-two. That in the seventh inning. 
Not sure if you're a Cougar who you want to win that Pepperdine USF game. Probably a lot of it would depend on. You just don't want any of them to sweep. That's what it comes down to. If USD were to lose that one, that would almost mathematically eliminate them. Pitch is a swing and a miss. One and two the count. One man out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. As Oyama steps back in. Mm. Fastball just missed outside. Mm. Sure did. Burrup uh, continuing to throw in the pen, as is Drew Zimmerman. Looks like Drew's trying to throw a game out there just in the bullpen. He's got to slow it down a little bit, especially the way anyway he's throwing. And Burrup on this trip has looked awfully good. Getting some time. There's a ground ball into the Cougar dugout. As we mentioned last night, there's no, absolutely no protection in these dugouts. You've got to be awake at all times. Yes, you do. Looks like everybody okay. Thumbs well, up from the umpire. Well, the trainer didn't move, so that's always a good sign. <laughs> that means nobody got hit. Two balls, two strikes as Oyama steps back in. And here's the pitch. Ball grounded foul. Cougars 30 and 12 on the year, ranked 25th in the nation. Coming off that sweep of Pacific last week. Lost to Cal on Monday. Two game losing streak and then one last night and they head here today. But mm. great change, Oyama swings and misses. Great pitch by Inouye. Might be the best we've seen him look the entire year. Very confident and comfortable out there. Yeah, he is looking fantastic. That pitch right there was really, really good. That brings uh, Brandon Shearer to the plate. He had the three-run home run. He's had the only hit of the ball game by LMU. Shearer steps in, struck out, and there's a bunt down the first baseline. Picked up by, no, unable to be picked up by anyway. That'll be a single for Shearer. What a good bunt. Yeah, Guys really good bunt. Two home bunt, runs yeah. the last two days. You don't expect that. Yeah, if anyway would have filled that, it would have been a close play at first. But really good bunt there. So two men out. A runner on, second hit for LMU. And Ascara steps in. He has grounded out and struck out in the ball game. Ascara Jr. out of San Diego, batting from the left side with two men out. And here's the pitch, and there's a ground ball. Kringlin's got it, backhands it. Steps on the bag, and that'll do it for LMU in the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. We're through six complete now. 8-3 Cougars leading the Lions on your new skin BYU radio network.